Yes, like Goosebumps I theme. Just, I was, yeah, I was about to say, are they seriously playing the Goosebumps theme? Yes, that's what uh, every once in a dial, every once in a dial, every once in a while, Mandalore will use that for his October videos. Funny enough, I played Singularity. Uh -huh. It's a fun game involving time travel. You have this little gauntlet that you can use to basically turn people to dust sometimes. Sounds very interesting. Yeah, it involves uh, going to an island where apparently a big explosion happened, but then you accidentally save the wrong person and then time wibbly wobbly happens. So yeah, that's fun. That so, we'll get on with the video. This is a very fun game for me. I remember playing the multiplayer. Where it was the monsters versus the people. Which I kind of like those kind of multiplayers where it's not just gun versus gun. Sometimes. Those are kind of a novelty. Anyway, mm -hmm. let's hit him. That, I don't think that's a po- <laughs> I didn't think that was a Polaroid, but okay. That's funny. Oh, he's doing this style, huh? When it comes to time travel stories, they often take place in a single unified timeline. Yeah. Others have completely separated out alternate timelines, which does have the benefit of solving the how did this happen in the first place questions. And then you have the stories that are... Uh, uh, <laughs> and Singularity is a game that takes... Uh, uh, and embraces <laughs> it. It can be silly pulp one moment and then shockingly clever the next. What remains clear is that the game definitely had troubled development, and it's easy to tell what games the developers were fans of. Now it I mean, you can clearly tell that they were a fan of, like, Half-Life, a few of the other style of games like that. Yeah. It I looks real. say that. I mean, it looks a lot like Half-Life to me. Yeah, I can kind of see it. I've ne but never yeah. played this game, nor have I played Half-Life, if Oof. I'm honest. But I've seen, like, the videos and stuff that takes place in Half-Life and stuff. Yeah. Or, like, people, like, making skits and stuff in it. I rented this game once. It was a lot of fun, even in the multiplayer. Ah. Yeah, there's all kinds of monsters you get to fight. Today's Raven Software is more stuck on Call of Duty. No uh, one damn. Can out their title like this one. So ah, Ravensoft. How much I love their work. They are now, unfortunately, in the Call of Duty mines. This is why we must destroy Activision. And finally get rid yeah. of Call of Duty once and for all, dear God. We, we have too many of those now. Let's go back and see how things were in the last game before the Call of Duty march. Spartan Team Titan 1 Actual, you are now entering Russian airspace. Proceed with caution. Oh shit, uh, let's go um, back farther. Before the campaign, you're treated to a brief historical reel. The Soviet Empire is expanding, but they still live in fear of American nuclear power. They haven't yeah. gotten the secret yet, or developed a competitor like a freeze bomb. <laughs> well, after swoosing right in and getting nuclear power, Stalin's finest day laborers unearth new material while searching for uranium. Element 99, exclusively found on a tiny island near Russia's east coast. It is worth noting in real life the actual Element 99 would be discovered a few years after this one was. Huh. It's called Einsteinium, though in the world of singularity, the... That's stupid. Why did you name it Einsteinium? This is why science people shouldn't let be, shouldn't let things be named sometimes. And that's called Einsteinium. <laughs> yeah. Einsteinium. Yeah. Though in the world of singularity, the Soviets found their E99 first. The real life uh. Einsteinium was also kept secret for a few years after its discovery, huh. and it was also only found in a remote location. Really? The location being wherever you set off a hydrogen bomb. So what? you can't say you found that in the alley behind Wendy's. Maybe <laughs> Arby's. Anyhow, E99. <laughs> Maybe <research>. Arby's. <laughs> <laughs> Arby's food is terrible. I don't know. I like Arby's. Every time I almost tried to gag the last time I ever ate it at Arby's. Anyway, which is spearheaded by a doctor, yeah. Victor Beresov. He establishes Arby's. a base in the island. Arby's is 12, such a guilty it. pleasure for me, honestly. Mm. There is no pleasure to be found from Arby's. Only death and pain. No, the, those uh, hamburgers that they came out with, those are really good, too, for me. Mm. It has near I mean, endless I know energy you potential. I don't think the same, but... <laughs> 
Both this some leadership fine. rush testing, and then something okay, happened that establishes a base in the island, Katorga 12, to study. Katorga 12. It has near endless energy potential, to some leadership Kator rush testing, and then something happened in 1955 Kator to get it all shut down. You might wonder what? why the Soviets will leave it untouched. That's the name of the island facility. What are these? What was they called again? The name of this game? It's Singularity. No, no, no. The uh, island name? They name they, they named the island Katorga 12. Katorga. Yes. What, oh, what? Okay. I was trying to pronounce it. I couldn't pronounce it right. That's why oh I asked God. you to repeat it. <laughs> For that long. The truth is, Khrushchev is likely more busy building more apartments. But yeah. now it's 2010, and a satellite has picked up a major radiation spike from Katorga 12. And the Americans are sending in Call of Duty Katorga and his friends 12. to investigate. <laughs> Call of Duty. <laughs> Oh shit. Your right is gone. Your one surviving squad mate is separated. I just realized that was Nolan North. Or at least it sounded like him. Really? Yeah, because I remember the yells from when he played Nathan Drake. Welcome to Katorga 12. There are oh. some familiar things about the opening, but yeah. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself yet. Because this base is full of ghosts and a time bubble that isekais you back to 1955. Oh. Whatever accident took place led to a huge fire, and Call of Duty kindly rescues a scientist who's trapped in the flames. It also looks like his squad mate was sucked back in time, too. Oh. Oh, well. And now all the Stalin and Lenin statues are replaced by the scientist you saved. A Mr. Oh. Nikolai Demichev, which, if you read a note earlier, would explain that he had died in the fire, and that's part of why the place got shut down. But now ah. buildings in the island have changed. There are mold zombies and Spetsnaz running around. There's a giant beam of light going into the sky. And Call of Duty and his friend remember that things aren't supposed to be this way. Yeah, they must be jamming our comms. It's all rushing all the time. Will Call of Duty figure out what's going wrong and set things right? Can someone mm. go back to the 50s and warn Khrushchev that corn isn't all it's cracked up to be? What? We'll see. <laughs> what? What was that? Can someone go back to the 50s that and warn Khrushchev that corn is an old... Junk. I mean, corn is a good filler food. It tastes nice, but what What do you mean? Does he just... Did Khrushchev just have a love of corn? I, uh, I guess as a, so. As a historian, I don't know about this. Khrush, I don't know much about Khrushchev, to be completely honest. I don't, I don't really know much about him either. But, uh, yeah, I guess he just really liked corn for some Cracked reason. Up to be. We will Wasn't see. He like a At the very Russian least, this is your average time. Yes. So that's what it yeah, looked yes, like. he was okay. a one point, the leader of the USSR, Krona. Uh, okay. okay. I don't think I paid too much attention to the USSR. I don't think anybody really did. It, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just You're kidding, physically I'm kidding. hurting me. You're physically hurting me. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> I actually forgot the leader's name at the time, so I I do apologize for that. Fine. Time travel story. I guess. What the fuck? Oh. Visually, like... Singularity is one of those 7th gen brown and bloom games. I would describe a good 90% of the game as being rust, especially since it's also a plot point and a mechanic. There are a few times yeah. where you travel back to the 50s yeah. when the base is in its heyday, and there's a lot more splashes of different color around. They yeah. are only brief visits, and then you're back to the tetanus sampler, but they are a welcome the change sampler. and a solid contrast to what Katorga now is. Yeah. An abandoned hellscape yeah, itself, I give you a hug. Well, thank you. ...bringing back to life in a way you can't quite understand. Oh. crawl through rust and rot, and then come across strange sci-fi technology. They gave you a heart Funnily for enough, your pain that you felt. Shift was doing a similar thing, but it didn't make sense in its setting, because it was oh. mainly aping Half-Life 2. Yeah! And don't get me wrong, I'd actually say hmm. that Singularity is doing this a lot more blatantly, but also a lot more competently. Katana ah. 12 is a mess of timelines. Here's the thing, it's okay to have influences and to wear them on your shoulder a bit, but if but you have to do it well. You have to change these up enough and also still make it interesting. Hmm. 
Because if you don't, you just become a bland repeat. It's why we have all those Call of Duty and Halo killers that never really did anything. Because they didn't yeah. really get the soul of it. Huh. You know how many Halo killers we have? Too many. Well, Halo's killing itself right now, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. It's science, but the art direction feels consistent the whole way through. Like, Time Shift's Chrome Regime Honestly, is visually just a mix of that era. Mm. Honestly, I think all the big freaking first-person shooter games are basically killing themselves. Yeah. This video game stuff. I mean, Some aspects are interesting or cool in a vacuum, but... Also, YouTube, that's not what we meant, but anyway. doesn't gel together that well. That could sound crazy to say because no. Time Shift may have had Battletech mechs, but it didn't well, have a cave troll. We were a cave troll that. who has a They're destroying living in its Yeah, just I don't think well, YouTube's gonna care. They're probably gonna demonetize whatever we do now. I didn't realize it until after I said it, so yeah, that's gonna be fun to deal with. Yeah. Hopefully they don't, but if you guys see this video, that means I did well. If not, I don't know what. Because the environment design did its job fantastically. Some levels can start feeling repetitive or drag on too long. But yeah. Its art style always maintains that it's a strange Soviet complex from the 50s. Cool. You even get to go back at points to see how some things worked in their prime. In the new Demichev timeline, E99 changed the world and was putting everything from vehicles to microwaves. The oh. island had its own separate disaster in its timeline, but before then, hmm. they mass-produced E99. To the point that all your weapons are using it in some capacity. All of them look bulky, heavy, and industrial. Even the ones cool. that are just modified versions of the guns we know. I, I haven't mean, played this in a while, so I remember all the guns. That might turn into the Elephant Man. I oh. sure hope it's being kept inside a metric brick of steel. The <laughs> other from Spetsnaz to Dimension Shifting Mutants to What If Pennywise Had a Gun. But oh, these what if Pennywise had a gun? <laughs> That's actually really good. That out of place. <laughs> that alone is a big accomplishment. But the other games in the room are worth talking about more. Quick fun fact for you, a game has never made me motion sick until this merry-go-round. Why? I don't know what's happening, but that does not feel right. I don't get Oof. it. When it came to Half-Life 2, a lot of FPS games from this era were drawing from it. Some might be taking only a few concepts or mechanics. Others would shove in some physics puzzles because why not? But yeah. unless there's another game I'm not aware of, I hmm. think Singularity for the boot, the Mr. Hello. amount that it took. Like, you get a device that lets you manipulate gravity, Hello, both Mystic. for throwing objects in combat and solving puzzles. There's even a point later in the game where it grows oh, yeah, blue and becomes super powerful. In the story itself, the prototype for the device looks a lot like an unfinished gravity gun. Oh, yeah. Which does make it feel a little more about outright that. homage. The thing is, they didn't rip it one to one and then call it a day. Instead, there's a great twist on it here. Because it's on a glove, it's always available instead of needing to switch over to a new weapon. So compared uh. to Half-Life 2's slower prep time, you can play a lot more reactively. Sergeant Suka lobs a grenade at you, lob it right back. Enemy mm. has a riot shield, that's yours now. <laughs> Redirect rockets away from you like you're bending lightning. And of that is course, kinda you can't cool. forget the best of all, throw the face yeah. ticks back to hell where they belong. Oh yeah, the ticks. Make a big list of visuals and other things those could be super annoying, Whoa. especially in, in multiplayer. I played as the tick, because you know what those do? They can uh, take control of bodies. Oh. Yeah. They imitate from okay. Half-Life 2. And while the physics aren't as tightly simulated, working in their limitations, kinda they made like a tool that was fun to use in great and different ways. Kinda. They just go into the body, though. You never see them unless they set you. Did you just double boop? Okay. Yes, I've been double do booped. Besides, controlling gravity is only one of its powers. Oh. Creative minds were at work. They were also oh, ripping shit. off Bioshock. <laughs> they were kind of. A lot of games then did start with a helicopter yeah. crash, but landing in the ocean and then crawling up to weird science fifties land with a lot of fairly similar visual imagery. Yeah, I can a see it. Projector introduction to what the place is. There are definitely style differences, but I think we can all see what's going on here. Plus, narratively, all that lavish architecture and spectacle is to welcome you to Rapture. It's putting its best foot forward, welcoming guests to Andrew Ryan's Undersea Epcot. Katorga 12 is mainly yeah. a plant that enriches Chrono Tiberium and does some research. Sure, in context, it's to welcome the employees and their families, but it doesn't connect quite as hard here. Mm. It still doesn't stop what they have from feeling charming at times. With the exception of Katorga's mascot, Dr. E99. It's just the symbol on a human body. That sucks. And Comrade yeah. Kandinsky is right there. Anyways, <laughs> the entire society is based around a the unstable mutation the, being. That's just a polar bear with the way. You find that fuels all your powers. Except instead of glowing libertarian sea world, it's rusting communist action park. You know, mm. I would say this game is also pretty wet and wild. 
There are a lot of cool shaders and other effects that permeate objects with water or have rain slide off rooftops. Yeah. It adds a lot of atmosphere to those quieter sections. And it helps reinforce how decrepit some of these buildings are when water is pouring down in your head. Or much worse. Beyond the ugly it's supposed to be, there are some very rough textures and areas, so the actual graphical fidelity can feel very inconsistent at points. Hmm. During development, some levels struggled to run on console, oh, so they damn. may have taken the hammer approach to a few assets. I'm very hungry. Do you have any food? When it what? comes to sound design, overall singularities is pretty good. The environmental effects, the mixing, the voice acting, hmm. it's all good. There was never a moment where something stuck out as particularly bad, but never a moment where something really stuck out at all. Actually, I take that back. Russian Steve Bloom is kind of fun. Uh. How is it you haven't aged a day in 50 years? Oh. Russian one. Steve Bloom. <laughs> I forgot he played that! All the weapons are perfectly fine, even though they do skew towards the weaker side. I think the worst it gets is actually your first weapon when you pick up this mutant brick of a revolver. Oh. Or line something from a 40k game. So then you go to use it and... I guess the damage it's doing reflects what it sounds like, but man. Damn. That it's is music, bad. It's the appropriate tension and action is. music that was all over 7th gen FPS games. It does help the mood and can work in the moment, but it's nothing that really sticks with you. Yeah, this is obviously aping both Half-Life and... The strings of falling into the hole. Obviously, aping Half-Life and Bioshock. I wish they did more with that. I wish they had more time on this game. It's very clear that they had some good ideas here. I'm not gonna hide. We can hydrate if you want. I'll be just here. Oh yeah, this part. Yeah. This is the part where you save that guy. You get the idea. Let's move on. Oh, God. The inspirations are yeah. clear, and when that's what you're drawing from, the game does have a lot going for it. But there are some weird choices and a few other things that drag the gameplay down. It has been a while, but I've played through this game a few times before, so I ran through on hard this round. I okay. do want to recommend hard, but that comes with a big asterisk I'll get into soon. Okay. Because it does have the trappings of a lot of 360 era shooters, like a linear campaign, two weapon limit, and a surprisingly fun multiplayer mode that basically dies out in a month. It's the pacing. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be right back. I gotta, I gotta run plug up my phone. Alright, have fun. But that can be surprising since Singularity has a good chunk of downtime. After the helicopter oh. crash, you can stretch out the road to the Time Vortex if you want to. You're free to opt into the Katorga 12 Visitor Center Grand Tour. Learning hmm. what every facility in the island does, reading through notes, listening to audio logs, huh. and lots of little interactables around just for the fun of it. Even after the Magic Treehouse ride directly to the Elephant's Foot, you're spat back out <laughs> to the abandoned village. You're able to poke around and take your time looking for more information or goodies. Like, I do wonder how many people missed the Soviet baby mobile. You know what? When you do get a gun, it's still ideal to play mm. carefully, at least on hard. The initial yeah. mutants will randomly charge to try and make you panic shoot. And you could sever a limb or blow chunks out of them and they might still keep coming. So oh. by giving you twitchy, unpredictable enemies and a garbage yeah, I don't pistol, remember these the guys. very first enemy is encouraging precision headshots. Ah. So now you're still able to slowly explore around while occasionally being ambushed by these things. There are even some fun fake outs huh. of the time ghosts where sometimes a real threat <laughs> is in the room. And other times, it can be genuinely horrifying. Jesus. Oh. But, uh, were any of you having trouble at school? Ah, probably that one. What's happening in these games? <laughs> What's happening in these games? <laughs> what the hell? What the hell? <laughs> you can pop in if you want, funny. Health, you find med packs so you can keep on you to heal up, but not yeah. all the way. Or a stim pack that does take you to full, but you can't carry it around. So there uh. is some genuine resource management that can happen here. Basically, there is a lot of good ideas going in here they just didn't have the time that's uh taylor's oldest yeah. time really for game development not like resident evil oh, yeah. here, and i don't want to oversell the opening like throughout the entire game you can explore around for items and upgrades but it's usually mm. not that far off the path oh, hello. even in the opening hello, max bunny. difficulty you don't have to be too oh, try hard to get your ammo taken this is daisy bunny 
taken care of completely. Hello. It's still fun to skulk around Hello. and feel like I'm connecting to the Denver airport, but I can't shake the sense that the entire game was maybe a little more survival horror at one point. Especially oh, because definitely. I rarely ran into ammo problems the entire game outside of power weapons, oh, that even good. then that wasn't that often. Oh. With this game's arsenal, what qualifies as a power weapon is muddy, not that that matters much. I do think mm. the Seeker is the number one contender, since you can only hold it temporarily, and that straight up lets you possess the bullet. Yeah, this gun literally lets you curve the bullet around and move it. I remember this one. <laughs> you only get these temporarily, but god, is it crazy. And they explode! Uh oh. Uh -oh. Yep. Uh -oh. Boom! That feels like a winner. Woo. If this game came out now, they might add some hard base to modernize it. But they also have the Tiberium enhanced Kalashnikov, shotgun, and sniper rifle whose secondary fire can slow down time. Which makes it one of the most effective sniper rifles in an FPS. Yeah. Even without that ability, it's a headshot yeah. machine and like all of Singularity's main weapons, can be upgraded over time. Oh, as long yeah. as you hunt around with the upgrade boxes that don't come huh. to you. The thing is, the sniper rifle doesn't have to go for the head on humans because it'll take out whatever it's pointing at. Oh! Singularity has some surprisingly oh, wow. robust gore effects, and a variety of death animations that don't drag on too long. Like, the effect your guns can have already ranges from gnarly to something insane from a Fallout game. Ooh. It's when you use your powers that you feel Ooh. that Neil Blomkamp kick. Ah. Uh. This is perfectly fitting for Katorga's atmosphere. God the architecture damn. isn't the only thing brutal around here. Despite the weapons not sounding amazing, the visual feedback they have is great. There's some fantastic energy in some of the combat arenas, and some aren't too far after the opening. The slower pacing helps ground you and contrasts against the escalating insanity. Another early Ooh. enemy is a smurf-like mutant who can teleport and phase out of time. So oh. when you first fight them, they can hop all over the place or just phase out of existence. You oh, can't yeah. kill instantly, so it makes it easy for them to overwhelm you. But when you figure out the rhythm, they're very engaging. You're trying to kill the fleshy mutants, aware that they can jump at any point, or if they hit too low, they might phase out. The phase out ones are still visible, you can't hurt them and they can't hurt you, but they are a distraction. So you need to be quick on prioritizing while still roughly tracking the rest of the pack. This is a very they good system. They can be so reactive too, flickering out for a second to dodge a hit and then coming back to slap you. This shit's like Ivan Drago's Flatland. <laughs> what? Yes. I don't even you know what the that power is. Glove, you can just push them out of that state. It makes it much easier. It's a nice little progression victory, but you still have to be careful. <laughs> Singularity's more creative weapons are mm. okay. You've got a spike gun with a heat sight and a grenade launcher that lets you control the grenade. Both feel too gimmicky and not that useful or satisfying, so I don't use them. What Singularity does have is an auto cannon. Oh and yeah. Auto cannon you can always carry with you. Oh yeah, I remember this thing. I used it a lot. There is one class of trooper that always has it. I used it a lot. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. You have two weapon slots. You have two Why weapons. Why would this ever not be with me? No. <laughs> I mean, I switched it out because the of variety. The option to play it like Jin Ro, I'm not going to say no. <laughs> now, the big draw in Singularity is the Time Manipulation Device, or TMD. At first, it can only manipulate the age of some objects, but it receives more upgrades throughout the game, which you'll find in stations scattered around in locations like the sewer. That's because an allied character knew you would be coming, and so placed all these stations around. More on that yeah. later. Having the power of time- It's weird timey-wimey stuff, so don't- So having them around certain places kind of makes sense. Hmm. Yeah. Weird timey-wimey stuff. Literally in the palm of your hand does sound powerful, and it can be. But when it comes to changing the age of things, you're mainly using that for puzzles. And yeah. a lot of those are physics puzzles, and a lot of those are moving a box around. Sometimes you have to figure out what a box is for or find the box, but that's a good chunk of them. It's also yeah. handy for finding items, like rusting away a lock or a safe. Though you can shoot the lock off some of those, your gun can't remake a box and its contents. And yeah, sometimes it is just a progression blocker you hit the funny button for, but it still looks visually neat, and there are a lot of objects you can remake if you hunt around for them. Like the strange True. messages that guide you along, tell you to not trust anybody, and not trust the messages. Don't they want to between me. being direct and vague, and it is strange they're all from the past. But outside the endless task of clearing already? up and de-rustifying your way forward, the TMD... Yeah, it is very confusing. Don't trust them, don't trust the girl, don't trust ba Barley, or whatever the name is. Hmm. Don't trust me. <laughs> can be handy in combat, too. Like, sometimes the enemy will eat through your cover, which you can immediately rebuild, and on the flip side, you can make the concrete barricade they were behind crumble away. 
But let's That's nice. That's not the obvious use of this thing. Yeah. Aging someone to dust. In a tight spot, hitting the mummy button can save you a lot of trouble. <laughs> the as mummy as your button. The energy is high enough. But some mutants might react to this process differently since they're already changed by the time crystals. Or whatever the hell is going on here. Mm. Like, some native plant life evolved much faster, which checks out. As for the others, the mutations don't make sense. I mean, it could have been the Langoliers or the orange creamsicle yeah. milk. Does it really matter? Time creamsicle milk? Or become big and what the hell is that? What did he just show right there? I have never seen... I'm... I'm oh looking God. for that. I don't know what the hell that was, and I kind of don't want to know. Who knows what's happening? And in case you were thinking of this, you could only age your enemies forward. So no one is smuggling the TMD into a SmashCon hotel room yet. <laughs> you get an upgrade to turn enemies into reverts, which are slobbering primordial goop monsters. Oh, I don't remember this upgrade. From the 50s are unprepared for. 2010 yeah. enemies don't do much better either. Like the other mutants, I'm not sure what the process is here either. I'll assume it beams a few CW shows in their entirety directly into your brain. And oh, obviously it's... the human body is just... I mean, there's no good CW shows, especially now. God damn. They tried to make a Batwoman show. It was awful from what I heard. Like, I was just showing a few uh, clips, and I'm like, wow. No one should make this. No one. <laughs> Whoever made this, you are you you shouldn't work in town no more. Not meant for that. But wouldn't oh. you know it? They're blind. And you encounter them in the blind enemy tunnel stealth section. This was sort yeah. of a golden age for those. I'm not going to show Colonial Marines footage. <laughs> they do have the benefit of hitting extremely hard if you do rile them up. So the first encounter with them can be a little tense and hard, but you do get that auto cannon. Yeah! Having an enemy you run into mm. basically turn into a summon is an interesting choice. Reverting an enemy isn't ideal in most situations, and it just seems like another chaotic way to have fun playing the video game. But there are situations where dunking a Spetsnaz in the Robocop juice actually is an extremely useful tactical option, especially in areas where you're at a disadvantage due to the level design. It's a weird tool to have, but a lot more interesting than just aging someone backwards into a goo puddle. Yeah! Oh my god! Like some gravity control oh god. And we've it did again. That. But your final power is making a bubble that slows time inside of it. When it comes to puzzles, it exclusively stops fans that are going too quickly. So you can look forward to that, but as usual, it's more engaging during the fighting. Letting yeah. you trap enemies to be at your mercy, or throwing one down as a defensive shield. You can set off a wall of bullets to fire through it, or pre-time explosions, or just walk up to someone and shoot them in the face over and over since the bubble doesn't affect you. It's a useful, uh. visually cool mechanic, and weirdly enough, Time Shift had this too. But it was one of the multiplayer-only time grenades. Uh. But like your guns, all of your powers can be upgraded as well, and you'll sometimes find blueprints for new perks. This can range from getting health on kills to absolutely massive time bubbles. Not to mention the oh. other general stat upgrades, which make you even more ridiculous. It's probably clear by everything you heard, but Singularity does lean towards the power fantasy side of games. But it has pacing that makes you ramp up to it and earn it, which I always appreciate. Yeah, the combat can be engaging, and there are some genuinely great ideas in some of the levels. But even with those, the combat generally only gets easier as the game goes on, and the puzzles never reach above simple. So even on hard, I wouldn't call Singularity a really difficult game. Except it has the potential to have the sudden spikes from hell. Because the game has autosave, but it doesn't have chapter select. You could be looking oh. around and find an upgrade blueprint when it turns out that it wasn't set dressing and this mission actually was timed. Well, shit. So you go back, rush, and accidentally make a wrong turn and miss the upgrade, and the doors shut behind you and the game saves. So that playthrough oh. misses that upgrade. Uh, wait, no. They have duplicates around, uh -oh. so that's good. You can use the Dead Space Objective Tracker to help you out, but it does suck to lose out on upgrades by just walking too far. But what yeah. can happen is the phase tick pit. Remember how I said ammo is never a problem? That's because there's already plenty around, but at the weapon lockers, you could just buy more, which I never needed to. What's important is that you could also swap out your two weapons from these lockers at any point. Because uh. of this, you rarely find a weapon around which hasn't been dropped by an enemy. It happens every so often, usually in an area that benefits from it a lot, but due to the lockers, it doesn't need to be spread out that much. You will still find areas that had a correct weapon in mind, though. Like finding ammo for a sniper rifle in a high elevation fight. You'll find ah. ammo, but the weapon itself is rarely there, and the tick pit is full of shotgun ammo. Singularity's shotgun is okay, it doesn't sound great, but it gets the job done. It is extremely mm. useful in this pit, but you might not have brought it. You can't load a save or select a oh, chapter to go back to the weapon locker, that's... you can only load- I didn't know about this, I don't remember this at all. Mm. This is very bad. <laughs> Because if you don't have the gun, then you are easily just going to run of ammo. Just going to run Back out. into the pit. So it may not surprise yeah. you to learn that this pit has a bit of a reputation. And oh. wait, he has the shotgun. 
Oh my god. Okay, the phase ticks. When you first land the pit, you send a few ticks back to Insect Hell, and then it's pretty oh. quiet. It's just you and the eggs. Oh my god, he's playing the flood music from Halo right now. The pipes are coming out. The pipes are coming out, Chrono. Oh god, not the pipes. The flutes. You have to crank open a door and then run through that tunnel to get out, which is simple enough. The simplicity is actually part of the madness. Well, 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 I need you to help with Fable. What do you need? Apparently Fable's trapped. It's because what you have to do is so straightforward, but the phase ticks never stop coming. When oh. you actually get in the tunnel, they keep spawning behind you, but more are moseying around that front corner, too. You probably won't be face tanking them either because they hit like trucks. And they explode when they die. They're extremely yeah. small, so panic hip firing can easily miss, but aiming down sight slows you down, and the others are on the way. Only a few hits will kill you, and since they're going to be waiting for you, you I don't remember this at heal, all. But they're still coming. You could throw down time bubbles to heal. My friend sent me a PC, and it looks okay, I guess, but it has li liquid cooling. Bruh. Again, I don't understand. Oh, dear God. I don't know uh, a lot about PCs at all, Fable. Charges very slowly, and you might not have many extra energy charges. I know about software, careful, not hardware. Piles them up, and they block your way. Now there is a more obvious solution to this, which is breaking all the eggs before the fight. Yeah, that was. Except loud. If they don't come out of those eggs; they come out of the tunnels. You can only see it from certain angles, but each tunnel has a large breakable egg inside of it. So that's what you actually needed to break. That no, fuck you. They keep coming. There is mm. no withdrawal from the tick pit. You can <laughs> mutate a no tick withdrawal. to distract the others, hmm. but that only lasts so long. If you actually make it into the tunnel, you have to clear out the ones in front of you without getting caught from behind. Ideally, okay. you would have a shotgun, which I did run through the game again to try, which is easier, but still tricky. But what you would benefit the most from is upgrading your time bubble, an upgrade you've had for 40 seconds at this point. So your mm. tutorial for this thing is stop a fan from moving, and then the Lyme Disease Library. <laughs> Lyme shit. Disease Library. And then you fight the Phase Tick Queen. Oh! Except you have the auto cannon by then. The little ones <laughs> who spawns are way harder, and she dies in 10 seconds. Talk about some weird pacing. If you come in with the right loadout or know what to expect, it is very manageable. But I had completely forgotten about this. Play this game, love it. All the endings after finish AM. I did have a lot of fun with this game when I got it. I only rented it because, you know, being poor kind of caused that. There could be magical yeah. pitfalls in this game that I just don't know about. Maybe this is what I get for turning off aim assist. Eh, <laughs> no, no, it doesn't matter. The face tick pit is hell. 90% uh. of my deaths were in this little arena. And if you drop in and want a new loadout, that's a new game, baby. As for my other deaths, these guys reappear throughout the game, sometimes without warning. You're having the revert stealth section, and then you turn a corner. Oh! Oh my god, I hate them so much. Just upgrade the bubble. It helps a lot. Just watch out for their theme music. The theme music? Ah! The tick theme music. There's not. Anyways, these comparisons the are not that stuff. It's your standard 7th gen 7 to 12 hour campaign, and while there are some nice set pieces, it really would have benefited from some more enemy variety, especially in the last third of the game. Because besides the occasional tick ambush, there's not much left to really challenge you. Which, yeah. to be fair, is a problem a lot of these superpower FPS games have. It gets trickier to make an enemy that's not cheap or unfair or doesn't break previous rules. And while the action is well paced, the environments don't help singularity when it comes to being repetitive. There's only so much rust and concrete my brain can take at a time, and I haven't even made an infra video yet. You I don't know what infra is. If you collide into something or back into an object. I'll be completely honest, I have no idea what he's talking about with infra. It won't freak out all the time, but you can't miss it when it does. But it's nowhere near the darkest of days level. Then you have the oh. general bugs, and these are not getting better over time. Amphrae like enemy AI shoot. going nuts or just Amphrae. stopping is something I also remember happening at times before. But a character yeah. outright vanishing from the game, which doesn't fix on reload, but a complete game restart, that's a new one. It's also kind of meta. There we go, all better now. It's still a fun game to play, but you are feeling the rust along with seeing it. So that leads yeah. to Singularity's story, which is chock full of audio logs. And a good amount are the, ah, I'm tired, just gonna rest for a second, next to a corpse. Uh, I'm bleeding pretty bad. I didn't find much to dig into <laughs> with those side stories, but the main plot is <laughs> worth talking about. Like most time travel stories, there are all kinds of holes you could point out, even beyond the ones the game itself does, but I can't shake the feeling that there might have been more to this that got cut out. If you don't want spoilers, go to here. Eh, we'll look at spoilers. It's an old game. We're probably not okay, going to play so it. Project Director Dr. Beresov... Well, I'm not going to play it again, but yeah. So anyway. This is the obvious in the middle of the game. You've undoubtedly figured out the timeline has been altered. Russia rules the world. Demichev is the chancellor. Nice. Well, so let's review. 
Call of Duty came to the abandoned island, got sucked back in time, and came back to a Soviet world, but then why is Katorga still abandoned? And why do only you and your squad mate... Oh, oh. why do only you remember it? World Dictator Demichev is also confused and wondering why you haven't aged and thinks it must be the work of the TMD. But after a daring rescue is launched, you meet Catherine. Though to be honest, in about a week I'll only remember her as being girl and I think that <laughs> happened in the plot too. But she's a member of, or the leader of, the resistance group called Mir-12. She's the only one you meet, which is what makes it unclear. But she has a PowerPoint that says that Call of Duty is the chosen one. A different, uh, mysterious second accident occurred, and in this one, Beresov died and Demichev lived. But by the time that happened, uh, Demichev already had the tools he needed for world domination, and quickly seized power inside the Soviet Union. Mir-12 knows all this because they found a journal outlining all of this. They don't know what's happening, but it says that Call of Duty will. Evidence points to this structure on Katorga 12. The singularity. Ah, uh, the singularity. The singularity. The journal claims one man will lead us to the answers. Singularity's plot is a bit of a paradox ah. itself, where it sounds extremely dense, but it's mm. really very thin. I mean, Demichev thinks the TMD did this, the Rebels think Call of Duty is the chosen one, so he just has to find Beresov's secret lab and get the TMD that the Soviets never found. But wouldn't oh. you know it, the lab also has a time rift, which, used with the TMD, can let you go back to 1955. The second mm -hmm. accident wasn't an accident, it was a purge by Demichev. Yeah, you sounds about right. On the two fighting and kill Demichev to save Beresov, and Beresov realizes the timeline is all fucked up and sends you back to 2010, <laughs> he'll hang out for 50 years doing research and putting upgrade stations around the island. You oh. just don't believe it. I have waited over 50 years to see you again, but to you it's been mere seconds, hasn't it? Okay, wait. So then why is the world still ruled by Demichev? It turns out you didn't kill him, you injured him. <laughs> no. I guess that's also why he's not thrilled to see you. Or did that happen yet? Or you did kill him, but Katorga 12 made Don't ask matter. questions oh, with time God. This part is unclear enough to justifiably make people lose track of the story. Because uh. it's said that due to Katorga 12 enriching so much E99, there are still time anomalies that last to this day. Like oh. the ghosts you run into, or the time vortexes mm. that throw Call of Duty around in time. Or Those are just accidents. Is weird. Yeah. Unlike the deliberate time travel you do sometimes. And if you come back and the continuity doesn't make sense, that's Katorga 12 being strange again. For example, at one point you get a super E99 bomb, but it needs to be charged, so Beresov sends you back in time to charge it, and then you come back. Except you stirred up some trouble going back in time doing that including own zoning the entire facility. It oh. looked like this before you went back in time, and now it's this. And oh. it's said that only you know how events have changed, but Beresov is glad you've gone back in time, so he does remember that he sent you back in the mission, but the time machine you went through has always been destroyed for him. They don't address these things, and other similar events are kept intentionally confusing. Ravensoft but deserves better. No Ravensoft way. always deserve better. If I remember correctly, they're also the ones that made the X-Men Legends game and... Marvel Ultimate Alliance games, so yeah, they deserve better. ...intended answer, and it's all swept under Katorga 12 is a mess of time streams. Everyone has PowerPoints explaining the one alternate timeline, but the changes you can make only seem to be inside of that. You can go back and shoot Demichev in the face, but for a few possible reasons, it doesn't matter. Their characters also seem set in stone. Beresov always seems to be a good man who wants to use E99 to help all of humanity. On the other side is Demichev, who is always power crazy and wants to rule the world with an iron fist. So it's natural that he wanted Beresov out of his way. Uh. Congratulations, Dr. Beresov. Incredible. I never would have thought it possible. Thank you, Dr. Demichev. Hopefully the DMD can be used to help the world. Having the characters sometimes swap mm. ally and villain roles, like the TMD corrupts one and then the other in Time Tennis, could have oh. been interesting, but also potentially a lot more confusing. Yeah. We already have stacked disasters. Yeah. There's the original timeline, where there's a fire where Demichev dies, Khrushchev yeah. orders things sped up, Beresov screws Oof. up the singularity, everyone dies, island shut down. Timeline 2, Demichev survives, orders a purge of the island. He also yeah. orders the singularity activated even though he's not there, island destroyed, and possibly made all the mutants. Like Mir-12 asked, what is the Singularity anyways? It's the big infinite energy tower, which is unstable and maybe causing the time disruptions and not the E-99. It should Probably. be destroyed, but it's the source of the wackiness, so fuck it. There were time slayers, I played one time slayer game, I wasn't very good at it. Maybe we'll go back and play those at time some with point. The bomb to blow it up. I actually, when I was younger, I never heard of them. Before the accidents and stop all this from happening. But what's done is done. Because Call of Duty gets there, goes back in time, blows the thing up, and comes back and it's still there. How is this possible? You might not believe the answer. All that effort to destroy the singularity when all I had to do was simply rebuild it. He just built a new one. This has been the second singularity the whole time.
or it's not, but he knows you went back to blow it up, but... Ah, oh, fuck it. I stand <laughs> by saying this game embraces how much of a mess time travel is. That doesn't make it any less frustrating or confusing. The character threads are easy to follow because they're so one note and no one ever changes no matter what. At one point, What's-Her-Face uh. helps you get the bomb and Beresov says she died off screen. It's not a setup for a betrayal or something on his end, it's what he saw actually happen. Oh. All the fun ideas and crazy visuals it has, the story isn't very interesting and told the very end of the good game. Here. The singularity is not a problem. You went back in time and saved Demichev from being killed in the burning building. Remember? No, no, we've gone over this. Beresov thinks you need to go back and stop yourself from saving Demichev. Yeah. The problem with that is, you tried that already. Franco, stop! It wasn't your squad mate, it was you. Call of Duty wasn't a silent protagonist after all. Which is a fun twist if you weren't paying attention to it throughout all the chaos. Yeah. Beresov thinks the only way to fix hmm. it is to go back and kill yourself. Demichev thinks that's stupid and you should blast Beresov and then you two can rule the world together. It is nicer given some agency after all of that, but at this point you're thinking more of the big picture because these characters seem like cardboard. So let's take hmm. a more evil approach. No, Captain. Well done, Captain Renko. I see you have what it takes to rule the world. Can you shoot him too? TND at your disposal. You and Demichev now control the singularity. Katorga 12 becomes pivotal in Demichev's final push to remove all remnants of rebellion against his leadership. As commander of the military, you forge Demichev's forces into an unstoppable war machine. Mm. We can train some of the island's creatures in combat. Oh, that's horrifying. The first wave assault in all major battles. As far as evil endings go, this one rules. You gain mm. so much power that it starts a cold war between you and Demichev. Oh! But he actually fulfilled his end of the deal. It gives you a lot more to chew on than him just betraying Call of Duty. But at the same time, you could just shoot both of them. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> With Dr. Beresov and Chancellor Demichev dead, the knowledge of E-99 and Katorga-12 dies with them. You disappear and become a legend in the years to come. That turns out to balkanize the Soviet Union and plunge the world into an age of darkness as everyone fights. Oh. A group of Katorga 12 creatures escapes to the Russian mainland and overruns New China. But no worries. Call of Duty is reforming America as its sole warlord. On one hand, oh. I appreciate how much effort they put into these endings. It's still clear there was one they expected players to pick, but the others yeah. don't feel like throwaways. They give glimpses into new nightmare worlds you're responsible for, and things can never be put back. Which is a riskier move for a shooter like this. Yeah. You blowing up the first singularity might still be in the main timeline. But like everything else, it's still iffy. So let's do what Beresov wants. Go back and set things right. Yeah. Damn you, Activision. Yeah, I don't remember how this exactly ends. I remember seeing that statue. Hammer two one, hammer two one, false alarm. Repeat, false alarm. Your mission has been scrubbed head on home. Ha! What I tell you, there's never anything interesting here. Right, comrade? Wrong, comrade. This is the most interesting thing in the game's story. Yeah, it's one of three endings, but it adds a lot of questions about Beresov. Let's dig into this. Okay. Call of Duty team killing himself doesn't close the loop entirely. The game established that concentrated E-99 can act very funky, like yeah. the singularity itself or the TMD. He could have outright vanished from existence, but the TMD <laughs> fell behind and Dr. Beresov found it in the fire's wreckage. Ah. Except he didn't outright vanish and seems to remember the game's events, but his mind replaced the one of the character that grew up in this world. Is Beresov the new world dictator? Is he even alive? He wasn't cruel like Demichev, but did think the world would be better under Soviet rule. I am certain that within a year my research will provide us with weapons that far surpass anything the West has. Hmm. Then we can begin our conquest to communist victory. For the Soviet Union! The seeds were already there, so did finding the TMD turn him into a despot? The fact these characters still <clears throat> exist in the same jobs implies that America wasn't wiped out or anything. But there's yeah. some had to stay some sort of different chips up. Karst, I know that's it. Please don't do that right now. Mm -hmm. 
I have to, like, sorry, guys. Mm -hmm. Living here in Jersey, find feelings from afar. You gotta find first gear in your giant robot car. And robots, I think. Yeah, someone play a sound alert, so unfortunately you can't, you can't hear anything right now. I will ask that you don't do that again while we're doing reactions, because it's a long song. Anyway, we look in here you again. ...activities, like getting the big statues of himself, but now he has yeah. one. Maybe it was commissioned after he died. The reality it's is the confusing. writer may have gone, what if it's the same opening, but they're all Soviet now, and the statue is Verisov, and that was that. Based on how vague a lot of other events in the game are, that seems more than likely. It's just it's such very a huge strange. gap this time, it makes you wonder more about what happened. Yeah. Without a conclusion that puts everything back, there is no good ending. It's all relative and cannot be undone. This framing doesn't scream happy ending to me, but it might be the best outcome possible. Or maybe yeah. even worse. You just don't know. Then it gets deeper, because after the credits, it's revealed the girl mm. didn't die, but was sucked back to the 1950s, and she oh. wrote the Mirror 12 journal. She writes it the exact same way to complete the loop, because... Ah, oh, fuck it. But hang on, wait. Demichev surviving the fire caused all this mess, but yeah. the original Call of Duty can't just not save him. He wouldn't know better, but the future version would. Instead of shooting myself, why not just shoot Demichev? This should fix everything. Phew, Vernusia. Vernusia, how did you get out of What the fuck? He's speaking Russian! <laughs> what the hell? Oh god. Uh, the game is basically Soviet Wolfenstein, with a lot of Half-Life 2 and Bioshock in there. It's yeah. obviously pulling from all kinds of games, really. It's still a fun campaign to play for a weekend, and then Start speaking with, Russian suddenly. I desperately wish the this hell? game had more time and a more stable <laughs> development period. There are great bits here already, but I'll always wonder what was cut out or cut down. I do wish Raven were making standalone <laughs> games still. The yeah. last two were this and... Oh, that makes sense. Oh, still, if it was still a good game. Games, this goes on sale for cheap. It is absolutely worth checking out. I'm sorry I'm late on this. I moved and was then immediately hit by a hurricane. Oh, luckily, dear God. Halloween is right around the oh, corner. Yeah. Snakey snake, huh? Let's listen to what it Singularity seems like a game ripe for a remake. Do I have any games oh. I wish had a remake, and what would change? In an ideal world, remasters would be for things that are technically flawed, or have yeah. cut content, or something else that could be obviously polished up. A remake would be for a good idea in a very flawed game, or the game is so old that it's a complete reimagining of it. Yeah. I've covered plenty of games that would be ripe for either, but now we're gonna get remakes of already great games because they can sell them again. And yeah, pretty much. The setting I'd like for a game, Combustion Engine Roman Empire. Thoughts on Empire Eater? That's actually an interesting idea. <laughs> It visually looks a bit strange to me. I also wonder how it would do if there was an official Empire Earth remaster. Will I miss the crazy neighbors? Absolutely not. Oh. I hate to say it out loud too, but I don't think I've actually escaped that saga. Let's just oh say no. the area I'm in has no HOA, which is a blessing and a curse. I've seen some trees that look like they have the Blair Witch totems hanging off of them. Oh. I'm waiting to see if those are still there past Halloween. If they are still around, I'm sure they'll make it into a video at some point. Okay. I really doubt it's the same people though. I hope not. The ball. Oh dear. Oh my god, he's playing the music from Toy Story. Anyway. Anyway. <clears throat> Thank you all so much for coming by. Ever found a weird game called Jazz Punk Director's Cut? Oh, I've heard of that. It was a very weird game. I remember watching someone play. Anyway. Thank you all so much for coming by. If you like what we're doing here, like, comment, subscribe. Any last words, Chrono? Uh, go hydrate. Okay. Thank you all so oh. much. Also, if the reason we ask you guys to do it, the reason every YouTuber asks you guys to do this is because, well, it really does help us grow. It helps us quite a bit. So, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.